What is it like living in Japan? In this video, you'll find out. So, a lot of people ask me when they find out that I lived in Japan, what's it like living in Japan? What's it like living in a foreign country? Well, I lived in Japan for just about two years in 2000, I think 12 and 13 and 14. And I was very fortunate enough to have a job that was able to house me and feed me and live me, um, pay me to work and live in Japan. And over those two years, I had a phenomenal time. I was able to try so much good food, make so many cool Japanese friends, and just explore the islands and enjoy the culture, learn a little bit of Japanese. I mean, watashi no nihongo is genki jinai. Uh, I just said my Japanese is not good, and I probably even said that wrong. So I need a, I have a lot to learn when it comes to Japanese, the culture, the food, the people, but my whole life, I wanted to go to Japan. I was like, I'm a, I'm a quarter Japanese, a lot of people don't know. My grandmother came over during World War II to the United States, but like, it's just, it was just so interesting to me growing up. And the fact that I was able to move there, live there, and learn Japanese, try the phenomenal food, get to know the people, do some surfing, it was just a very, very lucky, fortunate you know, time of my life. And I would definitely recommend living there and going to check out the place because living in Japan, I mean, you got your your 7-Eleven, your Family Mart, your, you know, it's like convenience stores. And the convenience store sushi, I thought, was better than most or any American sushi that I've had in the United States, excluding my grandmother's sushi. Her sushi was better, but she was from Japan and she was, it was Japanese sushi just made in the United States. Um, but, you know, their, their fast food is like, you know, Coco's Curry. Their Coco's Curry is really good. And they have everywhere from a, a level one to level 10. It's like a scaling system on how hot their curry is. It was so great being able to try to get all the way up. My buddy Seth, um, he could eat all the way up to 10, 10 level uh, of the spiciness. I could eat a five or a six. I got a 10 once. I ate like a quarter of it. I'm like, it's too spicy. It's just too spicy. So I gave it to my buddy Seth and he, he finished it off. Um, the food's really good, you know, there's really good sushi, they have really good beer and wines. You gotta try the, the plum wine, that's really good. A little sweet, but the sake, the sake's really good. Especially if you get it hot in the winter, oh my gosh. I went to um, Sky Tree in Tokyo to go visit my family and me and my friend went up there for a week or so or a few days. And when we were there, we were able to, um, you know, we were able to try some, when we were at Sky Tree, we had a hot, I had a hot Guinness. And my friend had a hot wine and it was just so good because it was freezing out when you're drinking, I don't know if it was Guinness, it was a stout, it was a dark beer. I was drinking this hot beer. I'm like, I've never had this before, but this is so good. It was like the most comforting alcoholic beverage I've ever had. And hot sake is pretty common throughout Japan, especially in the winter. I mean, um, sake is basically a stronger rice, wine, um, spirit, liqueur, kind of famous drink that they make throughout Japan. And um, so the that was really fun. The, the nightlife was really cool. The Japanese culture is, um, they like, you know, a lot of uh, Orientals are big on karaoke and whatnot. So a lot of them did karaoke. A lot of them would go out with friends and family or coworkers and drink and whatnot. The Japanese definitely, especially in Okinawa, Japan, they definitely know how to drink. Um, my friend Shima could drink a few big bottles of a, a bottle or so about this big of Alamori, which is, I think it was like 20 or 30%. He could drink a lot more than I could. He would often call me and be like, Landon, Landon, come pick me up. And I would, I would give him a ride to, you know, wherever he had to go or take him back home. But I definitely have to go back to Japan because the culture, the food, the people, everything is just so great. They have good surfing. Um, even in the, the winter in Tokyo, people surf. I actually was able to go surfing in December um, in Tokyo because my uncle lives in, I think he lives in Narita, Chiba. I think he lives in Narita. And we went down to Chiba, which is super close, and we went surfing. Um, and it was like 30 degrees out, but you know, I had a wetsuit. He had a surfboard for me to borrow really small I'm more of a longboard rider because I'm not a great surfer but um, it was really fun I think I was able to catch a wave I don't know if I was able to stand up but 
when I was sitting on his board, it was like a foot or two below water. It was just super thin and super short, and it was, it was a really good experience. I definitely recommend it. But um, man, I could go on for probably hours talking about Japan and living in Japan, going to Mount Fuji, doing all these things. And I'm sure in other videos, I'll do story times about you know the trip to Mount Fuji or different sites in Okinawa. I'm actually going back to both those places, so maybe I can, not Mount Fuji, but Japan and Okinawa. Uh, which is South Japan and here pretty soon. So I'll probably make some cool video logs about that. If you want to see those or other story times about Japan, um, just like and comment, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell icon. And every time a video posts, then you'll be notified that I posted a video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, um, awesome. And then, uh, yeah, it's been NST, Never Stop Traveling. Peace out, guys. Take care.